Hey everyone, welcome to the Burnt Brass Homestead channel. It was a beautiful sunny day today. The temperature was in the mid 70s. I decided to enjoy the day by going to Lowe's and Home Depot to see what they had in their gardening section. There were so many people out doing the same thing. So here we go. Look at these strawberries. $4.98 each. What that means is $4.98 for this pot. Do not buy these. Here are some herbs. And this is just going to be the new normal, I guess, price. Personally, herbs are easy to grow. I wouldn't buy any of these for $6. Close to $6, $5.78. So I wouldn't buy this. This one dill plant. Your markets, you're better off going to your markets and getting these for, for $2, $3 at most at your markets. Some markets. But parsley, like this one little parsley thing, just go ahead and buy a pack of seeds for $2.99 or $3.99. Sprinkle them out, keep them moist, and you'll get a, a lot of cilantro and parsley and other herbs. These prices are just kind of crazy. I mean, if anything, check back here uh, maybe mid-May towards end of May to see if any of these are on sale and then get them. Here are some gourmet salad mix. Just get mixed lettuce seeds and plant those, sprinkle them in the dirt and cover it with about a quarter inch of dirt and keep them moist on top until they start growing. They are so easy to grow. This is almost a gallon. Um, $15. For $3 you can get a packet of seed to grow this um, and you will get like a whole bed full and I don't recommend planting a whole bed full unless you eat a lot of lettuce because they grow so fast and you don't pull them out from the roots so you, you just pick what you need and it'll keep growing so uh, lettuce grows really fast so be careful how much you grow so this is another thing I just don't think it's worth paying $15 for. Now here are your tomatoes. I don't mind spending $5 on tomatoes um, because they do take a little while to start growing so you can either start them from seed really easy or you can obviously buy your tomatoes from the box store and again I don't mind spending $5 on these tomatoes. Um, if I wouldn't get hybrid cherry. Um, this isn't a tomato that we would get to eat, but something like a a slicing tomato. I don't know if they have any here, but oh, I actually like the Cherokee tomatoes. So I'm actually going to get uh, one or two of these. I think this is worth buying because two tomatoes at a market is five dollars. So. You're going to get a lot of tomatoes growing off of this. Now for me, I wouldn't want this growing right away. I will pop these off and let the tomatoes grow more before they start producing um, tomatoes. So I would want this to grow a lot more. This, is, has, this has a thick stem. And if you could, look for ones that have multiple tomatoes in a pot, but if not, um, I would still get these. Here's one that has two right here. But this isn't the variety that I was looking for. But whether it's one or two, I mean, because of how much tomatoes yield, this is worth it than going to the market getting tomatoes, especially if you eat a lot, um, put them in your salads or your sandwiches. Here you have the Cherokee tomatoes again. This is an heirloom tomato and I like these on sandwiches. Now this is 20 bucks. Typically I don't buy these large ones, but this one has, I thought it was two, but it's just one in here. Um, I normally don't buy these large ones for 20 bucks because 
I just don't think it's worth buying it, but I don't think it's a bad buy. Because uh, like I said, you're going to get a lot of tomatoes. I'm going to get the smaller ones and just let them grow out. I am also going to plant my own tomatoes. There are specific ones that I like to use to make my um, tomato sauce. So I am going to plant my own plum tomatoes. Um, each year I plant them to make sure I get exactly the number that I need to make my sauce. Here's a mint plant for $15. Again, mint really spreads. This is basically gonna be a one and done purchase. So if you if you were to buy this, I don't think it's a bad buy, uh, cause it's gonna spread and you're gonna get this year after year after year after year after year. Trust me, uh, my garden is filled with mint. I actually planted it in a large pot, a very large pot. But the little hole, the drainage hole at the bottom, one of the runners found its way out and got into the garden. But it's fine because we eat a lot of mint and we do keep it contained by pulling up the roots where, uh, where the mint grows, where we don't want it. But, but again, this is kind of worth it because your mint is a, is a one and done deal. You're gonna get it and it's gonna come back every year. Here are the pepper plants. I normally buy, again, um, pepper plants. Pepper and tomato plants. The slicing tomato and then the pepper plants I normally buy and then the banana uh, plants I buy. And then I also plant my own. That way, uh, because they take so long to grow, by getting them here, I'll get some plants and then about a month later, maybe mine will start producing as well. Now they have two sizes here. This larger one that I got from here is 10 bucks and this one is 4.98. I would get the 4.98 if you look at the difference between the two. It's not worth spending twice as much for this one if you look at the growth. So, I would go ahead and get the one for 4.98 be better off getting two of these for the price of one of these. Again, I still plan on planting my own as well, but this will hold me over until we get, uh, until ours start producing, and then we can, um, when, they, when we harvest them in, in bulk, then we can can them, freeze them, freeze dry and dehydrate them. So, but at least the ones that we buy from here, once they produce, start producing, we'll eat them. And then we'll, uh, when ours is ready to be harvested, we'll preserve those. So I will be getting some bell pepper plants and some of the, uh, the banana plants, sweet banana plants as well. I typically stay away from hybrid um, plants in general, but there are some that I do get. And here are some rosemary plants. Again, $15 for a larger pot. Uh, rosemary is really easy for us to grow where we live. So I just don't think it's worth it buying a $15 pot full of it. Also, here are the smaller pots. Take a look at your markets. Your markets may actually sell these for about $2.99. So check your market for some herbs before you go to your big box stores. Now keep in mind that everything that I just said, if it's hard for you to grow these specific plants, then by all means get them. It'll be worth it in the end versus you buying, going to the market each week to get these items. If you grow it in your own backyard, it's, it's still worth it overall. But keep in mind to, to dry some of this as it's growing. Don't just let it grow and die back. Dry some of this out as it's growing. Like for this one, if you were growing it at home, you can clip this off, hang it to let it dry, clip this, clip it back, and then put the dry ones back in a jar and then let it continue to grow and keep doing that. And if you want to, you can actually run it through a grinder uh, to kind of grind them up a little bit after it dries. And that way you can have your own homemade herbs, dried herbs, versus buying organic ones at the market for, you know, 
seven dollars for two ounces or four ounces here are some collards I believe yes these are collards and there may be yep there's some kale here now these are $4.98 each um, I mean we grow our own and I won't be getting any, any of these we still have some left over from growing in the greenhouse from over the winter uh, we're gonna pull most of the stuff out most of the items uh, most of the vegetables in the garden in the greenhouse out those that are old and plant some new ones but something like this this keeps growing so um, spending five dollars on collards or kill I don't see that as a, a, a bad buy because typically these look a little thin because they're in these um, small pots but once you put them in the ground and the roots get a chance to really spread they will grow this kale plant will grow as thick as this collard and you just keep picking these off as you're ready to eat them you just keep picking them off um, granted they'll be um, two two to three times the size of this and you pick off with you what you need and they'll keep coming back so spending five dollars on something like this you know I would do it and then but look for this is cabbage and these are like the six tray six trays I don't mind getting something like that especially if it's six six trays this is I would get this uh, so I guess once you start growing from seed you'll get so used to it the problem is timing which is why I'm here peppers tomatoes um, those are things that take a little long to grow so I will buy the plants from here they'll give me a start while mines catch up but if you grow your your seeds indoors um, if you start them in about February and make sure that you have um, that you keep the soil somewhat warm using a mat a heat mat or if it's in the greenhouse well then if, if I started my seeds in a timely manner I wouldn't be out here at all ever but because of work and a little bit of travel in March in the month of March I'm always behind a little bit in growing and starting my seeds so that's the only reason why I'm here well not really I actually like coming here to look around so I'll probably still be out here okay so when it comes to berries I mean these things just come back every year so I don't know how much these are oh so these are four fifteen dollars is it worth it sure I mean raspberries they produce shoots multiple shoots each year so we have to thin the raspberries out um, but and you could take cuttings and extend it your figs you've seen my fig uh, plant it's huge it's it's taller than the, the garage so these are worth getting they come back each year so spending fifteen dollars on these and then you can take cuttings to expand me personally I think it's worth it but not strawberries here's some raspberries again I prefer the spiny ones uh, the ones with thorns because that just seems more natural than the ones that they start to like produce without the thorns um, and these are just going to keep coming back and it saves you so much money than buying a pint for you know seven dollars and eight dollars and nine dollars so for your berry plants if, if you pay fifteen dollars for them it's fine but if you want to save money come back towards the end of the season and they normally sell them for about 50% off or five dollars depending on how bad they want to get rid of them and then that will be the best time to get them and from there you just know that you won't get any berries um, until the following year but you save a lot of money versus buying five of these plants again learn how to take cuttings so that you can create new plants from one raspberry or berry plant so that'll help save you some money but what I can tell you is that you should not buy do not buy these strawberry plants these are four 
98 per plant. And when they say per plant, they really mean per plant. So this is $4.78 for this and there's only one plant in there go to your um, places like uh, I will post a, a little description on the bottom of this but don't get don't pay four dollars and ninety eight cents for one strawberry plant you can literally get 30 of these for about twenty dollars and you can plant them. So I'll leave a link where some places where you can order a line to have them delivered to you. So it, it really, really isn't worth it at all. I don't care how desperate you are. It really isn't worth paying $4.98, almost $5, for one strawberry plant. Although these have runners and they will produce new plants, it really isn't worth it. So... I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe to help this small channel to grow.